caregivers walk a tight rope. Empathy on one side, apathy on the other. Too much empathy drains us. Too much apathy numbs us. Either way, a part of us fades. Good day everyone! Before we begin, allow us first to introduce ourselves. We are the researchers from BN3A Group 3A and I am ZNL N. Makayana and together with me are... I am John Lawrence Y. Lobaton. I am Rishi C. Dave J. Lopez. I am Hannah Ashley C. Mestra. And I am Anya Castell O. Magda. Our research is entitled Level of Compassion Fatigue Across Clinical Areas Among Senior Nursing Students. Now, allow me to discuss the objectives of our study. Our specific objectives are to describe the participant's profile, determine their level of compassion fatigue across the three clinical areas and combine, and examine if compassion fatigue differs significantly when grouped by profile variables such as general weighted average, ordinal position, religion, and sex. For our research design, we use a quantitative descriptive approach with a survey method. This allowed us to systematically collect and analyze data from senior nursing students across clinical areas to identify patterns of compassion fatigue. The survey also enabled us to reach a larger, more representative group of participants. Our study included 139 senior nursing students enrolled in the second semester of academic year 2024 to 2025, each with at least 40 hours of clinical exposure. They had clinical assignments in the geriatric unit, ICU, and psychiatric unit since their junior year. The sample size was calculated using Slovin's formula with a 0.05 margin of error based on a total population of 214 students. To ensure equal representation across six sections, we used stratified random sampling with participant selection via an online random number generator. For our research instrument, we used a modified version of the Professional Quality of Life Scale, our protocol developed by STAM in 1995 with permission. Our questionnaire consisted of two parts. Part 1 gathered the participants' demographic profile, while Part 2 included modified protocol questions tailored to each clinical area, 10 items each for the geriatric unit, ICU, and psychiatric unit. Now, let's proceed to the research study results and discussion, particularly with the demographic profile of the senior nursing students. For the general weighted average, most senior nursing students 66.9% have a general weighted average of 1.75 to 2, indicating average academic performance. About 20.14% perform above average, 1.25 to 1.50, while fewer fall into lower ranges, specifically 5.8%, 4.3%, and 2.9%. This supports studies of Bafemi and Samong 2024 showing performance tends to stabilize due to academic and clinical stress. Moreover, Sayali et al. 2023 emphasized that high performers benefit from good habits and support while low performers face stress-related challenges, added by Labrog et al. 2018. Moving on, most participants are either eldest or youngest children, eldest at 39% and youngest at 29%, middle children at 17.27% and only children at 15.11% made up smaller groups. This aligns with studies showing that eldest children often take on leadership roles, while youngest are outgoing and adaptable, both traits fitting for nursing. Fewer middle and only children may reflect different career influences. For the religion, participants are Roman Catholic, making up 79.1% of the group. Protestants follow at 17.3%, while only 3.6% identify as Mormons, agnostics, or others. This strong Catholic presence supports studies, showing that faith often guides compassionate care in nursing. Protestant students also benefit from spiritual support, which helps reduce emotional stress. Meanwhile, the low number of students from other religions may reflect limited access to faith-based support. 
for sex, most participants are female, making it about 80%, while males represent only 20%. This reflects the common trend of nursing being a female-dominated profession both locally and globally. For the level of compassion fatigue in clinical units, senior nursing students experience moderate compassion fatigue in the ICU with a mean of 2.853, geriatric unit with a mean of 2.698, and psychiatric unit with a mean of 2.694, and with the ICU having the highest emotional strain due to its stressful environment. These results align with the study supporting or reporting moderate compassion fatigue among nursing students and interns. Furthermore, more experienced nurses tend to show higher levels of fatigue, emphasizing the emotional toll of clinical work. Furthermore, this study's findings support Joyce Travelby's nursing theory, which highlights that emotional engagement in nurse-patient relationships is essential but can also lead to compassion fatigue. The theory suggests that building emotional resilience and self-awareness can help reduce fatigue over time, a process nursing students begin during clinical training. Now, let's discuss the relationship between the variables and the research study. Results show that there is no significant difference in compassion fatigue levels across different GWA brackets. Moreover, there is also no significant difference in compassion fatigue levels across different ordinal positions, religion, and sex. This suggests that academic performance, birth order, religion, and sex may not be the main factors influencing compassion fatigue in nursing students. Instead, it highlights the importance of other personal and environmental factors such as resilience, coping skills, and clinical experiences. This shows how compassion fatigue is a complex issue influenced by multiple factors beyond just demographics or grades. To conclude, this study examined senior nursing students' profiles and their compassion fatigue levels in clinical areas. Most students had average grades, were mainly eldest or youngest children, mostly female, and mostly Roman Catholic. Compassion fatigue was generally low to moderate and highest in the ICU. No significant differences were found based on academic performance, birth order, religion, sex, or clinical area. For studies recommendations, mental health programs focused on stress management and resilience should be integrated into training. Nursing schools should add courses on emotional intelligence and coping skills and provide accessible mental health resources. Clinical instructors should include emotional check-ins and be trained to spot early signs of fatigue. Parents should also offer emotional support and be informed about students' challenges. Students should practice self-care and use positive coping strategies. Future research should explore how compassion fatigue develops over time and influence of Filipino culture. These steps aim to build a resilient, compassionate nursing workforce in the Philippines. Addressing compassion fatigue early on is essential not only for the well-being of nursing students, but also for the quality of care they will provide as future healthcare professionals. Together, we can foster a healthier, more supportive environment for our nurses and the communities they serve. Where compassion heals but hearts grow tired, unveiling the cost of care is required.